Hey guys, welcome to lesson six of how to make iPhone apps with no programming experience. In this lesson, we're going to start our Xcode project for the War Card Game app. Uh, in particular, we're going to be laying out the user interface elements onto the view for our app. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to use auto layout and constraints to position those elements both in portrait and in landscape view. So that's the goal of this lesson. Before we get started, I want to make sure that you know how the war card game is played. So it's played with two players and both players simultaneously draw a card and whoever has the higher card wins that round and then you keep going until you run out of cards. Now in this virtual app, we don't really run out of cards, but we can still simulate the drawing of the two cards and comparing the values to see who gets the point or wins the round. So the number two is the lowest uh, and it goes from three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king with ace being the highest. So you can see it's a pretty simple card game to play and it's going to make the perfect starting application for us to build. Uh, and at the end, we're going to have a fun little app for us to play with. So now let's go ahead and create that Xcode project. In your welcome screen, click create a new Xcode project or go up to file, new project. And we're going to choose a single view application, just like we did for our Hello World demo. And I'm going to name it War. Now make sure you've filled in your organization name and your identifier. We kind of went through these fields in the previous lesson, so I'm not going to go through them again. Uh, but make sure the language select is, is Swift, device is iPhone, core data is unchecked, and these two you can also uncheck them. We're not going to be writing any tests for our code, but when your project gets really large and complex, uh, it is very useful to uh, include tests and basically whenever you make a change to your large project, um, these automated tests will run and basically pass or fail to give you an indication of the impact of the changes that you made. So if any of the tests fail, um, you know that your change caused the problem um, and so you won't be shipping an app update with bugs. But that's another lesson for another day. So for this demo, we're not going to include the tests. I'm gonna click Next. And I'm just going to save it on my desktop here. And for source control, again, we're not going to check this. And source control, I think I mentioned this in the previous lesson, is just a way for us to keep track of our changes and we can roll back at any time. But I don't want to introduce any unnecessary complexities for you here. So I'm going to leave that unchecked and then click Create. Okay, so now we've got our brand new um, Xcode project. Now this is a single view application, so it starts us off with one single view, one single view controller, and that view, as you can see from the storyboard here, is empty. Let's do a quick recap of the elements that we're going to be using of this Xcode interface. So I'm looking at the storyboard here, um, and this is a visual layout of the view that is our iPhone app. And this pane right here is unique to the storyboard. If we go into the code view, you're not gonna see this pane here. And you can click this little arrow and expand all of these elements. This is called the document outline. And it basically shows you in this list format, all of the elements that are on your view right here. So you can see the view controller controls this view. Um, and you can see that this view, this element right here is this blue highlighted part. So any elements that you add onto this view is going to come under this part. In the top layout guide and the bottom layout guide, as you see, when you click them uh, are just margins so that when you lay out your elements, um, you can lay them relative to this layout guide and it won't obstruct the status bar up here. And you can see the bottom layout guide goes all the way to the bottom. Okay, so this is called the document outline. And if you don't have this, you can click this little icon down here. See it says hide document outline and you can click it again to show it. Okay, now this right hand side here is called the inspector pane and down below you see all of the elements that you can add. Make sure that 
uh, you're on this third tab right here because you can click several tabs um, and it's this third one when you're on the storyboard that shows you all of these elements. If yours looks like this, that's okay. But if you click this button and you go into this list format, you're going to get some text and some description about what these elements are. So you can switch between the two by clicking this button. And furthermore, there's a text field beside it where you can search. I'm going to search for image view because that's what we want to add onto our storyboard. Um, and this is used to display an image. So I'm going to just click and drag that onto my storyboard here. Doesn't matter where you put it. And now you can see instantly on the document outline that this image view, because you just added it to your view, is under this view node right here. Furthermore, if you click this image view node or you click this guy here on your storyboard, the properties or the attributes in this right hand pane change to that image view. So I can set any of these properties to manipulate this element which I just added because uh, this attributes inspector pane shows properties and attributes for whatever you click or select on your storyboard. Okay, so now I've added an image view onto my storyboard in order to display an image, but there's no rules to tell how it's positioned because no matter how I resize it here or where I position it, it doesn't matter. That's not how the Xcode layout system works. It's not what you see is what you get. So the system that it uses is called auto layout and how it determines what size this image view is and how to position it on the view uh, is done with a set of rules that you specify. So right now this image view, I've just added it to the view and I have not included any rules on it yet. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two rules on it, one for the width and one for the height, just to tell the auto layout system uh, what size it should be. So let's go ahead and do that. So how to do that, I need to select this image view here like that, either through the document outline or just clicking it on your storyboard. And down here in the lower kind of right hand corner, you're going to see a couple of icons. This one right here is alignment constraints and this is called the align menu. And this is called the pin one, the right, the one right beside it. If you click that, you're going to see something like this pop out and you can see here there's a height and the width. All I need to do is add a check mark to these two. You can see the button here already changes to add two constraints. So when I click that, these two constraints are going to be added for these values right here. Uh, I'm going to make the width 120 and the height 170. And I'm going to go ahead and add these two constraints. So what happens right now? Well, instantly our image view turns red. And why does it turn red? Because it's basically telling us that based on the rules that we added, what we're seeing here is 23 points bigger than what the rule dictates. And this one is 27 wider than what the rule dictates. So what we need to do is just refresh the view uh, to display this image view based on what our rules dictate. And in order to do that, we select the image view, we go down to this button here, resolve auto layout issues, and let's just say update frames for all views in the view controller. Okay, so now it's the proper width and height. However, I don't have any constraints positioning it. All I've done is I have constraints setting the height and the width. You'll also notice this red icon here in my document outline. Now, if I click this, it tells me that it's missing some constraints. It's missing an X position constraint and a Y position constraint. Now, X is the X axis going along horizontally, and the Y is the Y position going vertically like that. So it's saying that I don't have constraints dictating how and where it should be positioned on this X and Y axis. So let's click this back button back to structure. Um, and one more thing to point out before we add those positioning constraints. If I click my image view, you'll notice that you'll see this triangle here now. 
because I've added some constraints to it, you can find them right here. See, there's the width and there's the height for my image view. Okay, so I'm going to select the image view and let's add some positioning constraints to them. I'm going to go down to this align menu. Remember, you have to make sure that your image view is selected before you can actually see this stuff. So I'm going to say center it vertically in the container. I'm going to add one constraint. So you can see now a red line appears again when I click my image view because what I'm seeing here is not reflective of what my rules, my constraints dictate. So I'm going to select the image view. I'm going to go down here to resolve auto layout issues and again update frames in view controller. So now it snaps that image view based on the rule that I added, right? It centers it vertically, but I still have an issue if I check this guy right here it says need constraints for X position because the system doesn't know where I should position it you know on the X axis here so let's press this back button to go back here select the image view and I'm going to say I'm gonna click this right here which is pin and I'm going to add a margin from the left and I'm gonna say 50 to enable it, you see how these margins on the top right and bottom are kind of faded out and this left one is highlighted. If you click it, it enables it or disables it. So right here I've enabled it. See it's a solid red line. I've set it to 50 and I'm going to say add one constraint. And constraint to margins is by default it's checked off and what that means is that these values is going to be based off of the top layout guide and the bottom layout guide. If I uncheck them, then it's not going to be positioned off of those layout guides. Instead, it's going to be positioned off the edge of the screen, which is what I want actually. So I'm going to uncheck constraint to margins and make sure that it's 50 from the left side of the screen. I'm going to add one constraint. And now let's click this. I don't have this option available to me because it's already updated. Uh, you see no red lines. It just happened to be in the right position. All right, so now you can see the error is gone for my uh, auto layout constraints. And right now it's happily positioned where my rules dictate. And it's happily got a size as well. So where are those constraints that I just added for the left margin and for the vertically centering well down here so this one is leading plus 75 so somehow uh, when I put 50 it added 75 instead but that's not a concern because I can highlight this constraint go to the right here on the attributes inspector and remember there's a couple of tabs so if you're not seeing what I'm seeing you can switch the tab I'm gonna set this to 50 there we go and then this is a center Y, so it's vertically centered on the Y axis. And this is called image view. I haven't named this guy right now. So all of these constraints say image view dot leading equals image view dot center Y equals. What I want to do in order to keep things clear uh, is just click that guy or press enter, which will go into rename mode. I'm going to name it first card like that. And now you can see that these constraints change to first card dot leading and first card dot center Y. And this is going to make things a lot more clear when I have more elements on my view. This is something that I'm going to point out in the future, but I'll touch on it right now. So sizing constraints follow the element itself. They're added to the element itself because these constraints are sizing this element. However, positioning constraints are added to the view that contains the element. So because this view contains first card, these rules, although they they tell us how to position first card, these rules are owned by the parent container. In this case, that's the view. Because the parent container, this view needs to know needs to know these rules in order to position its child, which is first card. All right, so you don't need to understand that 
quite right now, but something that I wanted to touch on is sizing constraints are contained by the element. They, the, the element owns them and positioning constraints are owned by the parent container. So when we run it now, you won't actually see anything because we haven't added an image to this guy, but we can actually add a background. So let's go ahead and do that. Click your image view on the right hand side uh, in this inspector pane. Make sure you're looking at this tab right here for attributes. And let's change the background to a neon green or whatever color that you want to choose. I'm going to select simulator is iPhone 6. And I'm going to run it. So the first time you run your project on the simulator, it's going to take uh, it's going to take a little while. But subsequent runs, well actually that was pretty fast, but subsequent runs should be faster. And we should see it in just a second. So there we go. Oh, that's a really bright green. <laughs> so there's our little image view with that neon green background positioned exactly how how our rules dictated it to be positioned. Now in the next lesson, uh, we're going to add the rest of the elements and we're going to take a look at how we're going to accommodate for the landscape view. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Thanks for watching and see you guys soon. <music>